thing that you need to know is that um, there are two links in the chat as well. The first link would be the event form. So we do want feedback on this event after we're done. Um, so if you want to fill that out, by filling that out, you are entered to win one of two Apple Watches or one of four Apple Airbuds. The other form is for attending today. We are offering you the opportunity to uh, waive your application fee. So by attending today, you get free application into Lakeland College. So take that form as well. Um, I don't know the details whether you have to apply today, um, but there is an opportunity for free application fees. So take that into consideration. Just a reminder that we are recording this and that um, we're encouraging you to keep your camera off if you want to remain anonymous. First of all, we're going to introduce ourselves. So I'm Bevan Hamilton. Um, I'm the program head for animal science here at Lakeland College, and I teach mostly beef production courses. I do teach the introduction to animal science course in first semester to first years. Uh, I also am the advisor for the commercial beef student managed farm uh, team. So we'll talk a lot about student managed farm before this is over. You'll you'll leave this this knowing what student managed farm is. Um, I grew up in Saskatchewan and I worked in industry for six years selling feed um, and, and had a couple other jobs. So uh, when we talk about what we can offer you at Lakeland College, it is that we are, are hands-on. Um, our, your instructors are personable. You will get to know them on a first name basis. And we do hire from industry. So um, one of our our requirements for the job is that you come with some industry experience so you will get some hands on on um, instruction from from people who came from the industry that you're learning about. So I'm going to pass it over to Yolette to introduce herself and then we'll introduce Matt. Good morning everybody. I am Yolette Van Eekirk. I am the dairy instructor. I mainly teach only dairy courses. Um, I'm also the dairy co-advisor for the student managed farm. And we will talk about clubs later, but I'm also the faculty advisor for um, the dairy club. I am originally from South Africa and my parents moved here 11 years ago um, to Canada. I do have lots of um, dairy experience. I do have a couple of degrees specifically with dairy. And um, yeah, most of you will see me if you are taking the dairy courses, so. Or if you were at Westerner this past week, you would have run into you lot. So um, Matt, we will pass the mic to you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Rustemeyer. I instruct primarily in the equine major. I'm currently the SMF advisor for the Colt starting team, and I'm also involved in the Ranch Horse Club. Um, I was born or raised on a farm near Mournville, where my parents have a small cattle operation and uh, also a meat shop that they market their cattle through. Uh, I left home here and was had cattle myself as well as um, worked for some large feedlots in southern Alberta as well as ranches uh, and was a basically self-proprietor custom horse training owner operator um, most of my adult life and um, prior to coming back to northern Alberta and working at Vermilion I worked on a large cattle operation in southeastern Alberta. So um, as Bevan alluded to, our instructors all have a, a focus on having industry experience and uh, my experiences kind of ended up leading me to being an instructor at Vermilion and uh, kind of glad, glad to be able to put my hands-on experience to use uh, in an educational format. 
Perfect. So that is the three instructors that we have on on the call today. Um, there are about 11 instructors in our program. Um, so you do get a broad range of people who are teaching you. Um, I do have about eight questions for you guys. So at the top of your screen, there is a smiley face with a hand. Uh, the hand on the right side is the raise hand option. So to take it up and put it down, um, just in case you're not familiar with Teams yet in the, uh, the virtual meeting setting that hopefully is going away soon and we can have open house in person next time. So when we look at you guys, I just want to ask a couple of questions. So how many of you are from Alberta? A couple of you, three of you, perfect. OK, hands down. Uh, Saskatchewan. British Columbia. East of Saskatchewan. Manitoba, Maritimes, Ontario. Outside of Canada. OK, somewhere I didn't say. Perfect. Oh, the Yukon. Very cool. Very cool. The sun's just coming up up there, probably. <laughs> um, can we also ask who's here inter or looking for information on the beef major today? No one. OK, oh, one. Perfect. And down, who's here looking for dairy information today? One, OK, the equine major. Perfect, and the livestock major. Awesome, so fairly even split across the board. Um, OK, what I'm going to do is. We're going to introduce our program. So about three years ago, uh, we went through and we really recreated the animal science technology program. Uh, we, the, the changes just meant that we could provide more species specific um, instruction to students who are interested in that species. So we broke it out into four majors, beef, dairy, equine, and the livestock major. We're going to talk about each one of those in depth. Uh, but what you need to know is there's about four or five species specific courses in those majors. So of your 20 courses you would take in the two years here, five of those courses, so a quarter of your courses are species specific. The other 15 courses teach you a breadth of knowledge in a lot of different species. And the idea behind that is that if we made every course species specific, um, we'd really be pigeonholing you in industry. So you can come and take the equine major and work in the beef um, industry, or you can take the dairy major and be selling beef feed if that's the job opportunity that comes available. Because you should leave here with enough information um, to be able to uh, go out and successfully work within the animal science industry. Um, but if you're looking for, if you know where you want to end up and you want, you know, you're going to go out and do something in the, in the dairy major, um, it will set you up for success in that area. The fifth option that we offer here for animal science at Lakeland College is the general egg certificate. Um, so that's a one year certificate. And what we've done is we've, if you come and take the gen egg certificate, it is the first year courses. So there's two reasons behind that. We used to let people pick and choose. And then what happened was when they picked and choose what courses they wanted to take. Um, then if they wanted to stay for another year, they ended up having to stay for two because the prerequisites didn't work out. Um, so we've changed it that you have to take the first year courses. So you do get some species specific courses in that as well. Um, the idea behind the Gen Egg certificate is it has two purposes. If you come for a two year program and you're really not liking it, 
um, but you think you can make it till April, you can leave here with a certificate. Um, if life changes in April and you don't want to come back for the second year, you can leave here with some with proof that you were here for a year. You can get that certificate or you can come intending to take the Gen Ag certificate. And then if at the end of your Gen Ag certificate you want to stay for the second year, it actually flows in quite nicely there. We just have to fill out some paperwork, uh, but we don't have to change your course load. So that's another option. New two years ago, we got a $4 million donation, which included bison um, and land for bison. So next year will be our first SMF unit, um, SMF being student managed farm. You'll hear us refer to that lovingly um, in that acronym. So there will be a bison operation on our 1200 acre farm as well. Uh, we'll be increasing our land size to accommodate those bison. Um, and we just took in our first set of first year bison students this year. So they will be operating that bison SMF unit next year. So if you're coming looking for, for that option, it's a really cool option as well. So I'm going to start talking about the beef major. Um, with the beef major, I teach most of the beef specific courses. So you learn everything from feedlot to cow calf. Um, we teach you how to calve in the first year. So we do have three student managed farm beef operations. We have a commercial beef operation with 100 cows. Um, we have 40 to 50 uh, purebred black Angus or red Angus cows, uh, and they will sell those bulls and some heifers in a in a a live sale that we host here every March called the Roundup. Um, and they we do that in conjunction with all the other units. So there'll be commercial heifers and Matt will talk about equine's involvement in that sale as well. And then we have an 80 kid, um, what we call the research herd or extensive herd. And when we are, our enrollment was increasing to a point where we needed another beef herd. We bought another commercial herd and then we thought, you know what, there's no point in calving this out and managing it the exact same as the herd we have on campus. So we created a herd that will calve on pasture in April, May and June. Um, you know, their marketing system is a little bit later. They, they market calves in December as opposed to September. And it really gives students an opportunity to, to see a herd that was managed in a different way. So we try to we try to do extensive grazing systems like you can see in the picture with that herd. Um, so it's a really cool op opportunity uh, within the beef major. You can leave here. You can go work at a feedlot. You can do any job in a feedlot, really. Um, feed sales. If, if you're going back to the farm and just want to want to take some extra, you want to take two years and learn some some different approaches or some more information, uh, this major is also also good for that. Um, and really, you can go anywhere in industry with a diploma from Lakeland College. Um, there are a few jobs that require a degree, um, such as um, pharmaceutical sales for for livestock. So there are some that require that, but it's also a good way. All of our majors do set you up for success within industry. So if you're looking at jobs, the other thing that we need to let you know about is we do have lots of students who come for the two years knowing they want to go to university. Um, but like myself, I came from a small town, Saskatchewan High School, and I, I was a decent student. I went to university and I struggled for that first year because I didn't know how to learn. Um, the small class size and the hands-on learning that we provide here um, are, are really tailored to those, those types of students. So after you're done here, we do have a, an option for you to transfer to the University of Alberta. They will take your two years and give you two years worth of university courses. So you would have a degree in four years. Uh, we have lots of students who transfer to the U of S. Not quite a two for two transfer, so you might have to take five semesters instead of four semesters of classes when you get to the U of S. Um, and your other option is we are now offering what used to be called an applied degree, so a really hands on degree um, called the egg technology degree. And so with your two years of diploma plus two more years of courses at Lakeland College, you can leave here with a degree as well. I think that's all I have for the beef major. We'll move on to Yolette can talk to you guys about the dairy major. 
So like Bevan mentioned, we do have five specific dairy courses. Um, they include intro to dairy, herd management, where you will learn anything about udder health, hoof health. Um, a lot of technology is incorporated in those courses. Um, so anything that have to do with dairy comp, which is our main um, technology for recording treatments or anything that's going on on our farm. You will also learn about um, AMS systems, parlors, manure management. Um, we also have a specific dairy nutrition course and a dairy business management course where you will learn everything about proaction um, or how to manage people on your farm. Um, then um, about our barn, um, we have, we're milking 120 milk, um, cows. We have a total of 260 animals on farm. So we raise our own heifer replacements. Um, the students um, make all of the decisions themselves when they are in their second year of the student management farm course. They um, plan out um, how are we raising our heifers, um, breeding strategies, milking. Um, there's lots of opportunity to be in the barn. Um, with some of the courses, we do have labs. So um, I use that opportunity to apply what we learn in the classroom to go out and practice the, that in, on the barn or in the barn on the animals. Um, and then it's a better way for you to learn that way. I am a hands-on person myself. So I like being in the barn and teaching students um, everything there is to know about the barn. Um, going out in industry, being from the dairy major, you can go um, obviously back to the farm with lots of um, knowledge about different areas of the dairy industry. You can go and work on somebody else's farm. You can be a Hertz um, person. You can also do sales um, for feed um, equipment, uh, supplies, and genetics. So there's really a lot of different opportunities. Um, Holstein Canada, DHI, those are just some of the things that you can possibly go out to, um, to do when you're done the dairy major um yeah i don't know what else to add but lots of opportunity in the dairy so perfect thanks for that and we will move on to the equine major with matt start over matt you're on, you're muted <laughs> i wondered I wondered when I muted if I wasn't going to do that to myself. But anyhow, in the equine major, we used to have a program previously called Western Ranch and Cow Horse. And it was a one year program and students were five days a week. And it was very directed at becoming a horse trainer. And what we were finding was that um, they weren't necessarily gaining the experiences or the experience of SMF, student managed farm, and they were missing out on, a, on the broader opportunities offered by the academic programming that existed in animal science technology. And so when we were approached or when we were in discussion about developing this major, basically we came up with the goal to develop the skills and students to professionally operate an economically viable equine operation. So it, regardless of whether you were going to be a horse trainer, a stable owner, uh, a ranch feedlot employee, or a herds person at an operation, we wanted a focus on sales uh, marketing and entrepreneurship. And those are the things that we've gained by joining the AST programming and particularly in student managed farm. So some of the courses that we um, are, or how do I say this? Rather some of the courses that are equine specific production courses are commercial horse production, equine husbandry, 
equine breeding management, and our final course is uh, Western horse industry. And in Western horse industry, it, it is very tailored to how do you market your business? How do you market uh, yourself and find a niche in the horse industry? Uh, one of the, the issues that we had had previously was we were maybe upskilling students on their riding ability, horsemanship, stockmanship, but not necessarily providing them with the skills to market themselves, create a business from the skills that they attained. So we still have riding labs two days a week in the first year. You get two two-hour riding labs. You come on a horse that is safe to you. So depending on your riding ability, it could be an aged horse or it could be something with 60 to 90 days on it. Um, our labs are focused on horsemanship, roping, and cow work. And so we basically will teach you how to work cattle in a, per, you know, in a performance environment as if you were going to work a cow for cow horse or cutting. Uh, but those are obviously very applicable to a ranch feedlot scenario. We also will work cattle um, by roping and restraining them and teach you how to safely rope and restrain cattle for ranch doctoring, summer doctoring, pasture doctoring. Um, in our second year, we have two teams or two streams for student managed farm. We have a brood mare and a colt starting stream. So the way that it is structured is that if you are in the broodmare team, you manage a band of nine broodmares. Uh, this year we have nine. Hopefully they're all bred um, and two weanlings. I know that Ron, who manages that team or is the faculty advisor rather for that team, uh, is preg, che preg tech checking next week. Uh, you manage those, you make decisions about breeding and and matings on that end of it, as well as marketing those animals, and you still ride two days a week. We also currently this year have 10 geldings. Um, we have in the past, we had seven, I think it was we actually sold five geldings last year in the Roundup sale and had a very good average of about 11,500 on those geldings. So we've created in our first year a little bit of a demand for uh, these student broke horses and uh, basically these are two three twos to three year olds and if you're on the colt team you ride five days a week two days a week out of a production course and three days through student managed farm and uh, our it's very labor intensive it's maybe a little bit more labor intensive than some of the other student managed farm units only because you can't miss that many days training. So our students have a double challenge of the actual physical work and time commitment, as well as the management coordinator position commitment that other SMF teams uh, have. And I would also tell you that the great thing I've learned last year being my first year as a student managed farm faculty advisor uh, was that it's basically set up so that you can get whatever you want out of your education. The harder you work at student managed farm, the better you're going to do not only in school, but when you go to industry. Very regularly we get people asking for references and it's it, I would say that um, their student managed farm marks are the greatest uh, indicator of how they're going to be as an employee. I think that's all I have, uh, unless you can add anything, Bevan. I think just based on two questions we had yesterday, we had students ask if they could come or if we taught anything in the English um, department. And the answer is no. Ron, Ron answered with you can ride in an English saddle for the first year, but you're going to be taught everything Western pleasure or Western ranch horse. Um, so it, you I'm not very much Western pleasure, but yeah. Yeah, but so it will be Western saddle. Um, and that is our our equine program is is Western, so keep that in mind. The other thing is in your first year, you will be required to ride your own horse. Um, don't over assume your riding level and buy a green broke horse that you can't get stuff done on. Um, so 
if you're having questions about what type of a horse you need to bring or be looking at. Um, we are we have we have two instructors who can help you out with that. So if you're looking at the equine program, uh, please reach out to Matt or Ron. Um, I'll put my email in the chat so I can forward your your information that way. So um, any we'll we'll ask for equine questions as we go along. So um, moving on to the livestock major. So when we look at the livestock major here at Lakeland College. When we're putting together the majors, this major is really designed for that person who doesn't necessarily know what species they want to go into um, or what species or where they're going to end up. So if you're a lot like me, I come from a far family. Um, I am the youngest, second youngest child of five. Um, I knew there was not a lot of room on the family farm for me. So I wanted to go into industry and I didn't necessarily know what part of industry I wanted to go into. So. When we design this, this is designed for people who want to go to the feed industry um, and want a breadth of knowledge. So you get a course in dairy, beef, and you get a livestock course, which includes sheep. Um, this is where our bison courses fall. Uh, if you are a bison person, you know that sheep and bison don't go together, so you're not required to take the sheep course if you're taking the bison course. Um, and then you would take a second course in either dairy or beef. And you're really getting that breadth of knowledge um that not every student here is getting so you take the introductory course to all the all the different species and it it, it sets you up for success if you don't know specifically where you want to end up so that's where this major was designed for now before i talk about student managed farm i asked the second years yesterday what they wanted to know two years ago before they came here when they were sitting in your guys's shoes and they said you know what we want to talk we, you should talk about student managed farm and the benefits of it so i will the other thing they wanted you to know is there is still a small class size so we have record enrollment this year after the covid gap year what we're, is what we're going to call it um so we do have 125 first years sitting in our theater this year so you're thinking wow that's a lot of students it's still smaller than a 300 person chemistry lecture that you would take at a university um and what we do with our courses is we might teach, you know, intro to animal science that doesn't have a lab component in 125 students. And I stand at the front and I lecture. So if it's a lecture based course, you might be with 100 other students. But if it's a specific course to your species, like my, like the beef production courses or the dairy production courses, you'll have no more than 50 people in that class. So we we might even split the class so that I teach two sections if we're getting into the into accounting in second year, that's split into two. So there's no more than 55 students per, per course. So we do still have small class sizes. And I think the thing you need to understand is you're told through all of high school that your college instructors won't care. Um, I would agree that at the university I was a number um, and you'll get a student number when you get here. But as instructors, we strive to learn your name by Christmas of the first semester. Now it's become a little bit more complicated with the mask situation going on. So you'll ask our first years if I know their names now and I don't. Um, so it's a little bit harder, but um, we will be on a first name basis with all of your instructors here. Now that doesn't mean that we're easier on you. We still have deadlines, but if you're missing class or we notice in class you're falling behind, we'll reach out and say, hey, hey, what's going on? Or hey, what do you need? So I think don't let that mentality of you know we're in a large class size and they're not going to care that's that's definitely not the feeling that our students get when they get to Lakeland College. Moving on to student managed farm so you've heard about student managed farm we currently have six soon we'll have seven student managed farm teams it actually started this is our 32nd year with student managed farm. 32 years ago the crops instructors started student managed farm by going you know what we're paying staff members to combine the field why don't we get students out in the combine which evolved into why aren't the students planning what crops are going in? And then finally, we gave the students the budget for our crops department. And for 15 years prior to the livestock students taking over as well, they were planning all of the events that happened in the cropping part of our farm. 15 years later, we said, why don't we start doing this with our livestock? So we have three beef teams, a dairy unit, 
two equine units, um, and then we will have a bison unit as well. When we say student managed farm, it is exactly that. There are some of your parents. I know my dad um, was 40, 45 years old before he got the family farm from his parents. So in student managed farm, you're making the decisions that your, your parents are making on their farm with our cattle or horses. You're handed a budget. You have to meet the budget. Um, you get to decide what bullies you want to buy, what horses they go to get, um, what we feed the horses and the cows. Um, if we're having a production issue in the dairy barn, you're working with the feed rep to figure out how we increase that production. So it's really cool when we go to buy new equipment, we include the students on, hey, what, what do we need? What do we need on farm? Um, in your first year, you will be in, in the, on the farm a lot. Uh, you'll be on the farm more in your second year. So first semester, we have a handling course. Uh, all the labs for it are on farm. By second semester, you're in a species specific course and you will have a lab that's in your in your species area. So for your the beef kids or students, you will be out in the in the red barn calving cows from January to March. Uh, the dairy students will be doing milking shifts and, and getting their, themselves familiarized with the barn. Equine is always in the arena on their horses, so they're working with the second years quite closely for most of the first year. As you can see in this picture, um, there's no instructors in that picture getting that animal ready to go in the ring. Uh, we take students to Agribition. Ron and Matt will take students to equine events in Saskatchewan and Alberta uh, as they open up after COVID. Uh, we just took students and dairy heifers to the Westerner to show. So I think the other thing you need to know is our connection to industry is strong. Uh, we have guest lectures in the classroom. We take students to conferences and we really want to get you connected to industry. So hopefully you can make a connection and get a job. It's really cool. I mean, I have students who sit at a bull sale and they'll phone me and say, hey, we're bidding on this bull. And the only permission I need to give them is that they can't go over the budget. So they need to we and we don't give you all the reins. Uh, you can't change the breeds very easily. That's not a no, but you have to put a proposal in. Um, so when we go to look at a bull or a horse, we know what we need. So the students have to buy something that matches that. Uh, the other thing is when you're going off the rails, we get you back on the rails. So when I say you're going to have all the reins, uh, if we notice you're going to hit the ditch, we'll 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 step in and save you. So you're you're on a team with 20 other students, and we make you have the conversations, and it's a really cool experience. That when our students leave here, they they're really happy they had that opportunity. So finally, clubs. Um, Matt is part of the Western Ranch Horse Club. Yolette is part of the Dairy Club. I am an instructor for the Judging Club. Um, we take students to the International Judging Competition at Agribition every year. You don't have to know how to judge. You don't have to know how to ride to go in the Western Ranch or the Western Horse um, Club, although it helps. <laughs> you can sit and watch and learn and not be on a horse, but generally those students don't last in that club. We have a stock dog club, a rodeo team. Um, there's a scuba diving club, a rock climbing club. So when I there's a there's an ample opportunity to meet like-minded people. If you are are coming to college thinking you're not going to meet anyone, we we provide you opportunities um, to do that. If you look at our our clubs, um, it's not very often you get to go to school and take your horse or your dog with you, and you can do that with either. So in the stock dog club. I don't know what the boarding fees are, but we do have a kennel on campus, an outdoor kennel with dog houses um, and chain link fence. And you can board your dog there and be part of the stock dog club using them on the sheep. Um, horses, equine students, you get first right of refusal to the equine pens. So you're required to bring a horse. If you are a student here that's not part of the equine cl club, not thinking of taking equine, but wanting to bring your horse, that's an opportunity too. We do have boarding available. Uh, that you have to pay for. But there is an opportunity for you to bring your, your animal with you. Um, you want to come and continue competing in, in rodeo, you can join the collegiate rodeo competition within the province. And uh, we have students this today who are competing in olds. And last weekend was our, our home rodeo. So I think our club interaction provides an opportunity for students to meet other students and, and also interact within industry. Unless Yulette and Matt have anything to add. 
I will open the floor for questions. So either use the raise hand option or we can verbally take your and we can verbally take your question or you can throw them in the chat and we will answer your questions. So we have about 20 minutes uh, where we're just going to leave the floor open for questions. We want to it can be about residents. It can be about. What, how we got where we were in industry, we, it can be about anything. If we can, you know, calm your fears and make make the decision easier for you in one way or another, um, that's what we want to do. So the floor is open to all of you. So, oh, for the equine program, what support is offered for the purchase of a horse if you don't have one already? Matt will answer that for you. So uh, there's, it, it, if you mean advice, uh, we took, we're full of free advice. If you mean funds, we don't we don't really help you there. Um, that's me at a weak attempt at humor. So Ron is very uh, Ron is very much in contact with students as they go forward looking for horses. Um, even if you say you if you said you found a horse that you wanted to see if it worked, you could send videos of that horse to Ron or myself, and we we could give you our feedback on it. We don't necessarily provide a list of breeders or options, um, but you know if if you're unsure of what you're looking for you're free to call out, get a hold of Ron or myself, either by phone or by email. And we can give you uh, basically a checklist of the things that we would look for. The other thing that's interesting in that question is by the time you leave this program, you will have created your own checklist of things to look for when you're buying and selling horses. Does that answer your question? We're going to assume yes. Okay. Chloe has a question. How much do students work with sheep and bison in the livestock stream? So um, if you're familiar with bison, you'll know that sheep carry a toxic disease that will kill bison. So we are very careful in um, how much interaction we have between the two. If you're a livestock student, you will work student, you will work with both at very separate times in quarantined um, areas. If you're a bison student, you don't have to work with the sheep. Uh, we don't obviously want you. We see no need in you doing that because you're not going to have sheep and bison at your home operation. Um, sheep are obviously hands on. Bison are more hands off. But if you are a bison student, you will have the opportunity that when we are running bison through the shoots, those students will be there. So um, we won't handle the bison a lot once or twice a, a year. Uh, but when we do handle them, there will be an opportunity for students to um find that opportunity matt is typing back to kruger in the chat about are you expected to get your own tack yes you are expected to come um prepared to ride with horse and tack uh so matt can provide kruger with more information but i just want the rest of you to see that as well yeah so we, also, we actually will supply a, a list of required items for your first year so it will describe what kind of saddle, what kind of bits, bridles, uh, lunge reins, ropes, et cetera, that you're going to be required to bring with you, uh, as well as uh, in your first year, we welcome you to wear a helmet. We encourage you to wear a helmet. In a second year, you are required to wear a helmet if you're riding a colt, a college on colt. Uh, if you're on your own horse, it's up to you. We encourage it, but in the second year, it's uh, it's mandatory while on a college cold. These are great questions. Keep them coming. Any other questions? Dairy's not getting picked on at all, and Yulette came to answer questions. So if you have one for her. If you can't get to the chat, please raise your hand and we will take verbal questions as well. All 
Are there any clubs or activities for students on weekends? That's a great question. Um, in your first year, there aren't a ton of activities with regards to school on the weekends. Uh, rodeo events will happen on the weekend. Uh, there is, if we look at club events, some of those will happen on the weekend. So if Dairy Club is taking a tour where they'll go and tour other dairy barns in the province, that will happen on the weekend. Uh, when you move into your second semester, we will be, or second year, sorry, um, your instructors, your SMF experience will require you to stay for some weekends. So there are health checks that will require weekends, um, not every weekend. So it is very flexible that way. Um, if we're going to Agribition or the Westerner, that would be a weekend event as well, or may run into the weekend. So um, yeah, there's that's a yes and no question, Chloe. Also, any opportunities to help with out with chores outside of class. We hire student milkers and student feeders on campus all the time. Um, so if you're coming and you're looking for some extra cash and want to be on the farm more, uh, please reach out in that first week and we can provide your resume to the farm manager on campus. Matt responded to, Cla to Karen, who are the riding instructors? Uh, Matt Rustemeyer, who is on the call, and Ron Hoffman. Um, so if you're from in that industry, you may have ran into either of them. Other questions? Is it possible to do a double major between dairy and beef, or is there another suggestion to learn about both? Uh, Caitlin, we can tailor your livestock major um, to do that for you. So anyone in the livestock major can choose a beef or a dairy or a bison SMF stream. Um, so Matt, you might want to read the next question and be prepared to answer that one. Um, so if you take the livestock major, you could take dairy or beef SMF. Um, so we could give you an SMF experience in both. Hope that answers your question, Caitlin. And Matt will tell us how much it costs to board a horse on campus. I can, I can answer faster than I can type. So uh, it depends on whether you're speaking about AST equine or whether you're in the rodeo club. There's basically several levels of board. So in AST equine, it costs $850 per semester, and that gives you a spot in a heated tack room and a locker in the barn. So, and it also puts your horse, depending on whether it's first or second year, first years have to do their own chores. Second years are in a group penning situation where the hay is put out for, by college staff. Um, Basically, there's no difference in price per board per semester between first and second year. Um, it's just a perk of second year that you don't have to adhere to barn chores. Um, in your first year uh, as an equine student, you actually have to conform basically to our stable management policies. And we actually have students from second year on SMF uh, manage barn schedules on college owned horses in the second semester. So it turns into something to the effect of uh, you'll, you're basically going to have to do three one re week rotations of stall chores in your second semester first year. Does that answer your question? If it's concerning rodeo club board, it can actually change. Uh, so if you get a box stall in the rodeo club, I believe it's 950, but I wouldn't want to be quoted on that. Chloe, what do students uh, learn in, in the labs for the livestock stream? So when we look at the livestock stream, you're really in the courses that the beef students are taking. So we're just really adding you into the beef course or the dairy course. So you will learn how to calve out beef cows. 
Um, in intro to dairy, let will correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a milking lab and some feed labs in there. If you're really out in the barn, you know, fetching cows and, and doing barn chores, but Gillette can answer that. Yes, you will be for intro to dairy. I We don't actually have particular labs set out for that, but we do let you go to the barn for a certain amount of chore shifts to tag along and learn about the dairy barn. And that is one of your um, projects in that class as well. And you are going to do night checks with the second year. So going out, making sure everything is good for the night. There's no cows calving. If there's a cow calving, you will be helping out with that. So there's lots of opportunity during that course to learn um, about the dairy barn and how it worked too. And just like all the other students, you'll, you will take an animal handling course, which will teach you how to sort cattle, move sheep, um, fetch dairy cows, etc load load and unload or tie horses so there's there's lots to happening there um if you look at the disease, diseases and treatments course that you would take in second semester you're out identifying sick animals on campus um so there's lots of hands-on learning provided in all of your courses no matter what major you take those are great questions i am going to throw the links back in the chat so if you haven't had an opportunity to or you didn't join at the start the first link i just posted is uh event feedback form for the session you just watched the second link that i'm posting is the tuition waiver so for what by watching this today you will get free admission to um lakeland college if you apply soon so Take a look at the link for more information. The first link puts you into a draw. So by filling out the feedback form, you do enter a draw for, or two, for either an Apple Watch or Apple Airbuds. Uh, do you do artificial insemination or learn about it? So we will teach you about synchronization and, and AI a bit in our reproductive course. Uh, learning how to AI beef or dairy animals would happen in what we call a continuing education course. So it's a weekend course that you can take on top of your other courses, um, and they will actually instruct you and you'll get a certificate saying you can AI. So we do offer that um, from November to January every year. AI for sheep or equine isn't um, offered on campus, uh, but we do offer artificial insemination courses for bovine. Perfect. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. We will stay on here for the next nine minutes if you have any more questions. Um, I might be biased, but I do suggest you choose Lakeland and we will provide you with an op awesome opportunity. So um stay on here if you have more questions do you lamb out sheep as well too we do not have any lambing sheep uh we just buy feeder sheep uh for the campus now um so we don't lamb sheep out on campus is the board for the ast horse included in tuition or extra it is extra on top of your tuition uh the benefit to you is you're guaranteed a pen that is our our benefit but you still have to pay for the pen um, it is on top of tuition. Something to keep in mind when you're looking at that student loan. But yeah, if you have any questions, I'm also going to put my email in the chat. So if you're on the fence and, and are or think of questions that you wished you'd asked next week, feel free to at any time email myself and I can forward it to the other instructors um, if, if I'm not the person to ask or or to student services. So please feel free to to reach out. We want to make this as smooth as possible. Uh, we wish you good luck in the rest of your high school career. We just ask that you keep those marks high enough so we can accept you into college and uh, whether you choose us or not, good luck in your future future plans. So uh, yeah, thanks for attending and we will stick around for a little while. 
if you have more questions, but I am going to stop recording.